Hi everyone, Christian here, and I'm going to break down Filipino movies across all genres. I created this series to people who just wants to know the story and don't have time to watch the whole movie. But I really want you to watch the movie first before proceeding with this breakdown because this video contains a whole lot of spoilers. So in this list, I based it on a web article of Fiction File of their 21 best films of all time from Philippine cinema. I give all the credits to them for making this list. So if you want to check their website, there is a link in the description. The movie that we are going to break down today is kind of disturbing in a way because of its theme. It has a torture scene and a scene with some sexual harassment. You have been warned, okay? But I got your backs. I won't show the whole scene anyway. This movie is written and directed by Abok Yu De La Cruz. Well, yeah, I acknowledge his great work here, so wherever he is now, I hope he's doing great. The movie is all about a plane crash that took place in the province of Lukban, Quezon in the 1950s, where many have died from the accident, but the villagers from that place took advantage of the remains, especially the briefcase full of money. And when the mayor found out that the briefcase is missing was found by the villagers, he immediately plans his bad intentions against them. So, if you want to know all the main point of every scene and why this is one of the best film in the Philippines of all time, well, let's go ahead and break down Mysterious Satowa or Joyful Mystery. Okay, the movie starts with a title screen. Then, we see a montage of everyday life of a villager doing their everyday work. After that, we see the whole family. They are the main characters of this movie. I hope that nobody will get confused. So. From left to right, Jamin, Ada, Ada's son, Ponsoy, as Ada's husband, Ising, the girlfriend of Jamin, Pinang, and Meshong, the husband of Pinang. They are stuck in the middle of the road because the captain who lent them his truck to travel to the city broke while on their way home. So, they decided to walk to visit the captain in charge in their village. Then, we see Castro one of the captain's server. We will get into him later. Take note of him, okay? So, the family tell the captain that the truck is broke and that they invited him to celebrate the baptism of their child. So, after that, they went home to start the celebration. We see here the typical celebration of a Filipino people, where they feast and drink, you know, even if there is some commotion. The celebration just continues. It feels like the movie has already ended, but it only just begun. When the airplane crashed in their village, of course. The next scene is where we see all of them following the captain to where the airplane crashed. It's kind of funny because everybody came along from children's to elders. You know, just to know what happened there, even if it's dangerous for them. And when they finally arrived to the location, the villagers became like scavengers. Yeah, very naive. Everybody took advantage of the remains of the dead. Little did they know that they were already stealing. So, the captain tries to stall them but they just ignore him. Then we see here Jamin found a black briefcase but Ponsoy and Meshong thinks that the briefcase is a bomb. So, they toss it around. And we see here Castro saying that he found it first. It's funny because if he found it first, why didn't he get it from the first place then? Then, the three men just run with the briefcase. Then, we transition to this dude finding something but he saw that this man is still alive. But why not report it to the captain instead? Well, he tries to end his suffering by shooting him. Everybody is stealing. They only stop what they are doing when someone releases a toxic gas and that the man shooting the struggling officer, I guess. The night after that, everybody enjoying what they have steal from the passengers of the airplane. Then, the whole family only found one briefcase. Jamin is very curious, so he tries to open it using a knife. They were very happy because inside of that briefcase has some business papers from the owners and a huge load of cash. They shared it with each other and call it a night. Then the captain here trying to communicate with the local government in the city but because of their place is so far, they were unable to get some feedback from the city so his troops tried to communicate later that night. 
Then the next scene, we finally see some extra soldiers from the city to assist them from the accident. And we see Castro here is becoming stubborn because he didn't get the black briefcase from before. After that, we finally see the mayor of the city along with some Chinese men asking if they found the briefcase of one of their business partners. They were asking for the papers because the papers are important to them. They also say that the briefcase contains a huge amount of cash. While the Chinese men are talking, Castro was there to listen to them. He thinks that the briefcase he saw earlier is the briefcase this Chinese man wants. So, the Chinese man wants the papers because that is more important to them. The money, they can find it later, they said. So, the next scene we see here the mayor asking the villagers to help them retrieve the body of the plane crash accident. Everybody refuses but once he says that he will give some reward to those who will help, then some raises their hands. The villagers here are some greedy people so, anyway, we transition to the next scene where they gather the bodies of the accident. Then finally, they found the man with the briefcase but the briefcase was nowhere to be found. The mayor here was being rude to the captain because he thinks that he's trying to find the briefcase for himself. After that, the search continues. Then after that, we see here the whole family eating their snack while drinking based on what I see here. They have no idea that the captain and the mayor was trying to find the black briefcase. Then here we see the captain and mayor talking to each other asking if the mayor found the money, will he still return it to the Chinese man? Well, the mayor says that no. And the mayor also asks the captain the same question but interrupted immediately because he already know what's the answer to that question. The captain, you know, is worried about the Chinese men so he warns the mayor about them. After that, Castro here is saying that he found the briefcase and the mayor says that they will share it with one another once he returned and they will plan it. Then the next scene, the family saw the soldiers are now leaving the village. After that, the whole family plan on what they're gonna do with the money that they have still. So, Ponsoi wants to move to the city, Meshong only wants a horse, and Jamin wants to marry Ising and move to the city. But. Everybody is worried because Castro found them taking the briefcase and that he might tell the mayor about it. But you know, they were just being greedy that when someone tried to take the money, they won't surrender it to them. The night after that, we see here Jamin and Ising. Jamin is trying to propose to Ising but Ising didn't want to believe because Jamin is drunk. But you know, Jamin is really serious. Then after that, here we see some smoochies from them. Smoochies, yes. Jamin says that she didn't answer his question, but Ising says that it's easy to answer that question. <laughs> then again, some smooches from the both of them. After that, they hear some gunshots. Jamin immediately leaves while Ising is being suspected by his mother. The morning after that, everybody continues their everyday life like nothing happened. Then they enjoy their lunch with some conversation about the incident last night. They try to know how many have died from the shooting. Then, we transition the night after that where the mayor is giving his speeches to his people, trying to promote his anti rat campaign. I guess that the meaning of his speeches is they need to remove the corrupt officials in their city. Then, we see here his friend Santos, the mayor wants him to join his band to take the briefcase so Santos, in exchange for his family to be safe, he accepted his offer. After that, we see here they were stuck in the middle of the rain in the forest so they decided to walk to the captain's camp. But the captain was not there so Castro led them to the captain's cabin to plan about the briefcase. So after that, we see their first move. They kidnap Jamin while having a dinner. Then the mayor here is feeling kinda guilty. Then the next one, they kidnap Ponsoi. Again, transition to our mayor becoming the antagonist of this movie. He's transforming without the effects. <laughs> Yes, he's becoming evil. Then the last one to be kidnapped is Meshong while having a cuddling time with their baby. Then the neighbor next door tries to check what is happening but suddenly shot by one of the kidnappers. So the whole camp heard the gunshot so they act quickly and when they check the village, the boy who was shot is now already dead. The kidnappers drag Ponsoi, Jamin, and Meshong to their hideout and the mayor finally transformed into a bad guy. <laughs> yes. After that, everybody mourned to the dead boy. The captain here tries to convince everybody that the hook, the hook is the is like a terrorist for them, or the people against the military in the Philippines, kidnap them to join their army. But the family doesn't want to believe that, so they continue to mourn for the dead boy. 
After the successful kidnapping of the three men, Santos here tells the mayor about the news but he tries to abandon the plan because he killed the boy. But our mayor threatens him that something will happen to his family if he leaves right now. The morning after the mayor goes to the camp to find Castro, the captain says that he's with him yesterday. The mayor spreads some fake news about Castro stealing his wallet and watches. He made this scene to show that he is very angry to Castro and to make him less suspicious to our captain. The next scene shows how Castro tried to torture Meshong, Ponsoy, and Jamin by forcing foods to their mouth. Then the next scene, everybody is preparing for the boy's wake and his funeral. Then the mayor here is trying to give help but the villagers don't want to accept anything from him. You know, the villagers really suspects him by the way he talks to them. The captain says to the family he will do his best to help find Ponsoy, Jamin, and Meshong. After that, Castro were trying to convince them to tell where the briefcase is but none answered to him. We got to a scene where our captain getting the news that the Hook are there to invade the town. But you know, the Hook wants to offer their deepest condolence to the boy who died. The family asked them if where did they took their husband but the Hooks was really innocent you know so they immediately fled from the village when the soldiers came. Then after that, we cut to the scene of the kidnappers burying them alive and Castro here pissing to them while burying. After that, the family here talking about what they were going to do about the money. They also suspect Castro for doing the kidnapping and also the captain and the mayor. They suspect everybody from the higher officials and then they ask if where should they go for help. Then we transition to the scene where the mayor and captain confronts to each other. The mayor here is again spreading some fake news to the captain so that he can continue to his plan. The mayor says that the city is being attacked and they need the captain's soldier but the captain you know just follow his orders anyway and they need to prepare before going to the city. The next scene we see Ponsoy, Jamin, and Meshong buried with their heads above the ground. Again, Castro is trying to convince them to say where is the briefcase. Even if they were being tortured by them, they never say it. We see here Santos trying to oppose them by killing them because of the crime he did earlier. I guess he is now being a coward here. So Castro forced him to torture Jamin to take some of his tooth. So after that, we can see here Ising is being captured by one of the kidnappers. And the family talking to each other that one of their son Benito is fishing in a rainy day. Then we see Benito actually fishing. After that, we see Castro using Ising to convince them to say where is the briefcase by sexually harassing her. So Jamin finally say to stop and he finally say to Castro where the briefcase is. The kidnappers didn't know that they were being watched by Benito, the one who is fishing earlier. So the kidnappers tell Santos to spread the news to the mayor. After that, Benito tells the family where Jamin, Ponsoy, and Meshong are all along with Ising. Okay, after that scene, we can see here the synchronous acts of everybody. The mayor finally knows the news and goes to where they are. The family is traveling where they are also. Then the soldiers try to do their final mission in the village to find where Jamin, Ponsoy, and Meshong is. I don't know if the family tells the captain where they are without telling about the briefcase or they are trying to invade the hook anyway. Then the next scene is everybody going into the kidnapper's hiding place. The soldiers of the captain found some suspicious person thinking that it's the enemy. Then we finally saw the family confronting the kidnappers and offering them to release their family in exchange for the briefcase. So. Castro tries to force them to hand the briefcase without releasing them. But you know, while taking the briefcase, Benito tries his moves to distract the kidnappers and Pinang shot the leg of Castro. At the stop, Castro then finally releasing all of them. After that, the mayor and Santos arrive in the hiding place but everybody died. The mayor also killed Santos by the way. After that, I guess it was a setup from the family. The soldiers shout at the mayor but the mayor shot them so the soldiers killed him like that. So when the captain checks the briefcase, the money was gone but the papers are still there. So that's it for this scene. The movie ends where we see a celebration. It's also the wedding day of Ising and Jamin. Then Ponsoy and Meshong shared their speeches to them and everybody is happy. The end. Okay, 
Hold it right there. This movie was really filled with lessons in life. This movie is all about what a money can do to a person's decision and perspective in their everyday life. They can be greedy or selfish or somewhat evil. But does I think this is one of the best movie in the Philippines of all time? Well, I would have to say yes, just because of the lessons you will learn from this movie. Also, the ending is kinda creepy because it has a hidden meaning because no matter what happens, Everybody will just go on with their lives even if they steal or kill someone. That's why it transitions from happy music to kinda sad music before rolling the credit scene. The acting is great, the cinematography and the music is great. So I guess that's it for the breakdown. See you guys again in the next one. Ingat!